Welcome to Windows 7 Paint Overview. I'm Trainer Lori. What is Windows 7 Paint? Well, let, remember that classic art tool that everybody played with when they first got Windows and never used again because it was so hard to use and it really didn't do much? Well, now you can crop shapes, merge photos, add text, erase pixels with real brush type tools. It's awesome. When you first open Paint, you'll see that there is a Paint button. This is called the Paint button, or we might think of it as File. And under that, you're going to see Open and New and all the things that you would normally find under File. Let's say we want to open a picture. This is what the user interface would look like. And you can see that there's Paste and, of course, Cut and Copy and Select, just like in those very expensive picture formatting tool uh, programs and, and a lot of other tools, including Colors. Under Select, you can select all, and when you do that, you can see how the entire picture that I took of Kenny has been selected. And then I can choose just to select portions of it as well. Uh, when you've selected it, you could do all kinds of things like move it, or you can resize it by clicking on the handles. You can select and then crop, use the crop tool. In this case, I've selected only Kenny's face, and, and then I use the crop tool to crop it down. Now it's smaller. You can also drag to crop. Uh, notice how the handles, when you hover over the, the, uh, the square handles here, your cursor turns into a double-sided arrow. So you can click and drag that, and that will also crop so you don't have to actually select. But be careful because this will not resize, it simply cuts down. Use the resize and skew option. Here you can see that I can use this to actually resize this, the size of it in, in percentage or I can skew it. Probably wouldn't want to skew a picture, but you might want to skew text like um, italics. You can also use the freeform selection and then in this case, I select it and then delete it. And so Kenny's face is gone, but I can then paste it somewhere else. I can either hit delete or I can hit cut. Now, if you invert the selection, it keeps the background and uh, uh, it keeps the selected area that you did uh, put the selection around and deletes in the background. So it does just the opposite of, of select. So you might want to invert if you meant to keep Kenny's face. In this case, I wanted to copy and paste Kenny because here his parents have a new baby and he didn't get to go to the hospital so we can uh, make it look like he was actually there. The problem is, is when I paste it, as with all JPEGs, you'll get this white background wherever there's nothing. There are no transparent pixels in JPEGs. And so you can actually choose under select, one of your options is to say make it a transparent selection. And then so it cuts out around it. But if you'll notice, I didn't do a very good job of cropping him. I see it when I when I selected him, I just did a, a free form and I didn't get very close. Uh, you might want to uh, play with that and, and just get his head and not all those extra pixels. But now it looks almost like he's there. So this is how I might erase. You can actually use the erase tool before you bring it in because if you erase it after you bring it in, you're going to erase pixels from the the other picture as well. And the eraser tool, uh, you can resize it, and, and it will take it ba back to this white. And remember, when it's white, uh, you have to say, make it transparent, because JPEGs aren't transparent. And you can resize it. This is one of those times when you want to really blow it up so you can see the edges really well. There's also some brush tools. Um, so the, uh, for painting or uh, erasing, you can use the brush tools for all kinds of things. And you can make them bigger or smaller using the size tools over here, or, if you want to make it even bigger, you can use the control plus the plus key. And that just keeps making it bigger and bigger and bigger. So you can grow it as big as you need to. But let's look at each of those brushes. So you can see here, this is one, and this is what one looks like here. So you can see that is a, a regular paintbrush. And then the next two are calligraphy pens. The next one is a spray paint. Uh, this one is oil. And the nice thing about oil and watercolor both is in the new version of paint, they see how the paint work, works its way out just like a real paintbrush. It'll uh, run out of paint essentially. So it makes it look more realistic. Uh, six is a crayon. 
A seven is a marker, eight is a pencil, color pencil, and then nine, of course, is watercolor. And I use black so you can see it, but of course you can use any color that you want. We have color one and color two. Color one is what your brush will do, and color two is what your erase will do, what color it, it turns into once you've erased it. If you want more colors, click the Edit Colors. You can see that there's a palette there built in of lots of colors. But if you want more to choose from, then you can come in here, just like in any other um, Microsoft Office program. Imagine that you would like to color with two colors, all using the same, um, for example, arrow. So I have this arrow, and I want it to be two colors. Well, I simply color it with one color using the brush, draw it, and then erase make sure that your second color is the color that you want and use the erase and it will now color the same arrow with a second color. So don't just think of it as erase but as color too. A wonderful tool is the color picker because uh, here in Elizabeth's blanket you can see we want that color. I want to be able to use that color for something else. So I come up to the color picker and click in the blue and you can see it adds it to color one. So now I have that in my palette and I can draw with that color. You can fill with color. When I use the fill bucket it's a little bit different from drawing because it will fill in the background. And so it will turn that whole background uh, in the, the the color. However, you can see that the 8 didn't quite make it. The inside of the 6 and inside of the 9 as well. So all you have to do is click in them one more time. Click once in the top and once in the bottom and it will fill them automatically. Uh, this is great when you have a single color that you want to change. Uh, if you have a multicolored background, um, it will not show any of the multicolor. It will completely overwrite that the color. You have the option for shapes. You can see here, the, uh, for example, the star. And then you can fill the star with whatever color you want. And notice under the fill option, we have these the crayon marker and those other options that we saw earlier. So this is what they might look like. Natural pencil watercolor. When you draw with a star or a shape, it becomes a vector. Um, a vector is a shape that uh, can be resized freely, but the second you deselect it, it becomes a raster. Raster is more like a photo, and uh, it, it, instead of having lines, it then becomes pixels. And so keep this in mind. Uh, there's not a lot of editing options. The second you unselect it, it turns into a raster, unlike other programs, um, the very expensive ones, that allow you to choose when you want to uh, turn it from a vector into a raster. If you don't understand those concepts, you might want to look for another one of our classes where we explain them in more detail. Text is another great option. If I want to type text on there, and I can change the font, of course. And when you see those lines around it, does it make you think it's a vector or a raster? The second it's created, it is a vector. And then as soon as you deselect it or click off of it, it becomes a raster, and you don't have as much control over it. Now it is a raster. We also have the option of choosing whether it's opaque, and that would be the background, or transparent. You can see this one, you can see through it. Now notice this text I actually had to make white, because if I have blue text on a blue background with transparent, I'm not going to see much except blue, and that's what I actually had to do. And then when you're done, you can save as, and you have lots of options there, a PNG, and that would be for the web a JPEG, which is very useful throughout uh, all uses, essentially. You can use it on the web or on the uh, paper. Uh, bitmap, and GIF, and, and other formats as well. That's all. Thank you for joining us. See you next time.